guitar players are idiots. We like to pretend that having multiple versions of basically the same plank of wood sounds different when really nobody cares. And we're all victim to the bullshit marketing of the guitar companies that tell us that the mahogany wood in your Les Paul gives you a darker tone with more sustain or that a semi-hollow guitar sounds different. My father-in-law has uh, basically a music store in his house and he's got... <sighs> Sorry guys, I just had to pick my nose there. He's got a crazy collection of guitars and he always gets me the most generous gifts. Uh, like he got me this awesome, huge MIDI keyboard um, and a bunch of this electronic stuff that I use every day. And it's tough to get gifts for him because he has so many guitars and so many microphones and headphones and stuff like that, that uh, it's all basically redundant. You know, he has, I think, four Explorers, and they're both just dual humbucker configuration. And he has so many acoustics and all this stuff. So we're running out of varieties of guitars <laughs> to get him. So I figured I'd make him something that he can't buy, and then he can try and beat that gift. One of my neighbors is a woodworker, and he uh, has these crazy slabs of walnut wood from a tree he cut down in North Carolina. They cut down and processed the whole tree, and it's just been sitting in a storage unit for six years since they cut it down. I asked him, hey, could I... Uh, use some of it because it's really beautiful wood to make a guitar for um, my father-in-law, John. So I decided I'd build him this bass guitar uh, and I told him, you know, I'll do whatever body shape you want, assuming he'd pick like a solid body of just a random shape. That would be pretty easy to cut out on the CNC, but instead he wanted a semi-hollow like Gibson 335 body style um, and he wanted it on a bass because he's been telling me for like three years that he's going to build this custom bass and uh, he hasn't made any progress toward that. So initially I was gonna try and do this out of one piece. These boards are crazy. They're uh, two, almost uh, two and a half inches thick and then 15 inches wide. And my plan initially was to take one of those and cut it down the middle or cut maybe half an inch off of it to make the top and make a single piece top and then make the bottom out of the other piece. A true hollow body, like a jazz guitar, is kind of made like an acoustic guitar. It's several pieces of carved wood assembled together, and it has like internal supports and stuff like that because the whole body of the guitar is supposed to resonate. With semi-hollow electric guitars, it's not really like that. It has a chamber um, and some F-holes. So basically what I was gonna do is I was gonna take this body shape, um, and I was gonna slice it across here using a bandsaw. It's called resawing. You stand it up like this, and then you run it through the bandsaw with a fence, and you slice it down this line here. But it's 15 inches wide, and there's not really a bandsaw at this shop that I was uh, using that could accommodate that. And also a bandsaw tends to drift as you're cutting through something because it's a, it's a flexible blade. It kind of goes like this as you cut through it. So that wasn't really going to be possible. So uh, the other option was to, on the CNC, take a second piece of this awesome wood and mill it down to this quarter inch top that we want but that's also a huge waste of wood. So instead what I took was a piece of a branch. So it's a narrower piece of wood, so it'll fit through the bandsaw. And then what we do is it's called book matching. And you've probably seen this on like Les Pauls. It's really common where it's split down the middle and the guitar is symmetrical. What they do is they take a board and then they resaw it like I described on the bandsaw and then they open it up like a book. And then uh, that creates this cool symmetrical effect where the grain is roughly matching on either side. So I decided to do that so as not to waste this extra wood. So I just took a vector drawing of a 335 guitar. I dropped it into Fusion and then I uh, extruded this guitar shape. Uh, and then I sliced it across the middle here. A walnut is a heavy wood. If you leave it as a solid body, it's gonna be crazy heavy. And as it stands, the final result with these channels cut out of it turned out to be still like seven pounds, which is pretty heavy for a, a, a standard base body. And then uh, I put three volume holes so he can decide kind of whatever he wants to do with those. And then initially, cause I've never built a guitar, this is gonna be the first guitar I've built. Initially, I was assuming that on the CNC with that perfect precision, I could cut the neck pocket in advance, but it turns out that base necks, even the prefab ones, are not made to any kind of like precise spec. If you design the neck pocket before you actually get the neck that you're going to use,
because there's a good chance there's going to be some gaps or it won't fit and you'll have to reroute or fill it anyway. So what we're going to have to do is order the neck and then measure that out once it arrives and then cut that hole by hand. So I did these couple cool renders so I could get an idea of what this was going to look like in the end. And then uh, this whole process took like three days in total. So I've never actually processed a rough sawn piece of wood before, but when you get it, it doesn't actually have a single perfectly flat edge. I don't know if they did it by hand with like a they must have, maybe, or with a chainsaw or something like that. So everything is only sort of straight. What that means is you have to process the wood so that you at least have one straight side to start from. I took the top and then I had to flatten it. So I cut a piece of that narrow branch. I cut it to length so that it was twice the length of the guitar body. I built this little tray so that I could make a router sled for my cheap little trim router. The router sled is just two pieces of aluminum angle. They cradle the router in place so you can slide back and forth. And then you take that sled and you make a tray that's taller than your piece of wood that you're trying to mill down. And you can use the fact that the trim router has a variable depth to uh, be able to flatten the board. So you make this tray and you make the router sled and then all you do is you just do a bunch of passes up and down the board until the whole board is flat on one side. It's actually pretty impressive the finish that comes out of this and my router sled really sucked. It was shifting and bending so uh, it wasn't perfect. So here's that board. This is the rough sawn side that I didn't finish and uh, you can see how uneven it is right there. It's clearly not straight. It warps in one direction. But when I flip it over after the milling, look how flat that came out. You can see all these grooves and it looks like those are actually like grooves that you can feel, but you can't feel that if you touch it. Those are just from the shape of the blade. So they're just minor indentations that you actually can't even feel in the spots where it worked properly. So, okay. And then I took it into the wood shop and uh, we flattened the one edge on the jointer now that we had a flat side. That worked out, and then we resawed it on the on the bandsaw. So they glued it up while I was away, and then this is how that turned out. Pretty impressive. And then uh, the next thing to do was to do the same planing on this big slab, this huge slab that we have here. And uh, in order to get the first flat edge, we just surfaced it on the CNC. So it does the same thing that I was doing with the router sled, but it just goes quickly. And then uh, following that, really simple, we took the uh, design that I had and we started milling out the bottom piece. It's scary milling into a big piece of wood like this. I've never done that before because you don't know what's actually inside it. Plywood, you know, is relatively uniform. And if it's good quality stuff, you can guess that it's uniform because they, uh, they fill all those pockets and stuff in advance. Whereas with a single piece of wood like this, it's just a mystery. So this crack where this knot is was not really very visible from either side when, uh, before we started cutting. And as we started cutting, it appeared more and more. And thank God it didn't end up being uh, too big of a deal. And we ended up keeping the back of the guitar a little bit thicker than I had initially planned because every depth pass we did felt like I was uh, taking a bigger risk and I didn't want to waste this awesome piece of wood. So the bottom turned out pretty amazing. Top, same thing. All we did was just lay it on the table and then do some planing passes. So we had a problem here with the uh, F holes. The For whatever reason, the way it was calculating the pass had it re-intersect itself and it created this problem where um, it, the bit overshot and actually ruined the shape of the F hole. So Partway through, I was glad I caught it. We had to, while it was on the table, we had to do a bit of a redesign and enlarge the F holes. First of all, so that the bit didn't follow that path. And then also so that it covered up the, the path that was there previously. After that, we pretty much had it. When you cut something on the CNC, a lot of the time you use tabs if it's a small piece because it's actually sucking to the surface of the table with a vacuum. It's pretty crazy. It pulls through the MDF wood that's on the top through the little pores, it actually pulls air through. But if the piece is too small, it doesn't have enough suction and the bit can throw a piece off of the table and cause a big problem where you ruin your piece. So 
Um, we use these tabs, and then afterward, you just cut those off with a flush cutting bit on a uh, on a trim router. It was pretty amazing, and um, as always, the precision that you get out of the CNC is just mind blowing. If you look at the way that these two pieces line up, and we magically got so lucky with the quality of this wood that even though it was actually the core of the tree on that big slab, it didn't warp much, and it fit together beautifully. The only other problem so far has been that. <laughs> when we imported my design into the CNC software, it didn't accommodate any of the actual curves. It just made it polygons. So now we have to do a bunch of sanding on the outside to make those corners rounded. But then I gave it to him for Christmas. And uh, yeah, this week we're going to be doing some um, finishing work on it. And uh, hopefully we'll get it glued up and the neck ordered. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of videos on the work that I've been doing at my house. And then I'm going to continue with the Lame Boy stuff into the new year. I'll do a review video on the year because it's been a little nuts. I hope you guys are doing well and happy holidays and I'm going to go work on my F holes.